Welcome to the Coach Chris Hatcher Show, presented by Alabama 811. I'm your host, Kevin Clack. We're on the course each week. I'm joined by Sanford head football coach Chris Hatcher. This past Saturday, Sanford hosts its first ever NCAA playoff game and won in walk-off fashion in overtime against the Lions of Southeastern Louisiana. Uh, state 48 to 42. Coach, we, we've said it all year, but this group of Bulldogs, they just find a way to win. Well, you're correct in saying that. What a great, um, number one, great atmosphere that we had at the game. Very appreciative of our fans, um, especially our students coming out and supporting our team. Um, that was great to see, and um, that was extra fuel for us down the stretch, so we're very appreciative of that. But um, our guys, they play extremely hard. Best compliment that I could give them. Um, they're finding a way each and every week, no matter um, you know what it looks like throughout the course of the ball game. Um, and then we have certain players that each week, they always seem to be ready when their number's called and step up. It was a great day to be a Sanford Bulldog. Um, we're excited to advance to the round of eight. So we're very appreciative of the opportunities that have come our way this year. Look forward to many, many more. Well, Coach, we knew coming into the game that quarterback Michael Harris would be a game time decision. He comes in the game for five plays. Um, Coach, was that one of those situations where you allowed Mike to, to go into the game, to just see how he felt, and kind of allow him to make that decision? Well, we talked about it all week. We managed Mike, and um, Quincy took all the one reps throughout the course of the week of practice. And, um, you know, I was just flat honest with the quarterback room that if, you know, Mike could go, he had earned the right to be the starter um, due to his play throughout the course of the season. Um, he felt good in warm ups, he felt like he could go out there and play. Um, and then after a, a few plays, he got dinged up, but Quincy was ready to go, and, and boy, what a show did he put on. Boy, he sure did, and uh, he was obviously ready to play. It was second pass of the game. Hits Judd Cockett for a 16-yard touchdown. Coach, Quincy wasn't just some guy, you, you know, you pulled off the bench. He's been getting reps all year. He's been ready uh, to play. Um, he, he's ready when his number's called. Talk about Quincy, his play, and just his impact on this team. Well, you know, we talked a little bit about it after his stellar performance against Mercer in double overtime. Um, he's practiced extremely well. Um, he's been very businesslike in his approach. And, um, and then I think, um, you know, he's been learning from a good guy. Mike, um, I think Mike um, has done a really good job of, um, of, of helping Quincy as well. I mean, we have a great room um, with those quarterbacks. But um, again, um, you know, we didn't change the calls. Uh, we call the same plays that whether Mike was in there or Quincy. Um, it goes in, gets, um, makes a nice run to start the game. Um, we call a base play. He actually checked the receiver, um, Judd, on the, on the touchdown. He made that call himself, so that tells you what type of confidence he has. Um, and, and went out there and, uh, and made plays. But I think more importantly, um, our guys are comfortable with Quincy. And um, that speaks volumes of, of the type of person he is. Um, and they're very confident when he came in the game that he could get the job done. You know, Michael and Quincy both have the ability to run the ball, but it seems that Q adds another dimension to that rushing attack. You know, we've talked all year about Jalen, and we've talked about Jay, the kind of this two-headed monster. It just seems like maybe the monster's grown third head when you bring Quincy into well, it. Well, there's no question. You know, yeah, we've talked about Mike's an efficient runner, um, but Quincy's got a little, little bit shifty. A little, he's a little more shifty, and um, I, I don't know Mike will get mad, but I think Quincy's faster than Mike as well. So uh, Quincy does a good job running, and, um, and one thing about it is, um, you know, there, there's an art at quarterback to know and win the scramble, um, and, um, and that's nothing we've told him. He came here already knowing that, and that's added another dimension to our offense. Well, on the day, Kendall Watson leads the receivers with seven catches, 110 yards, and a touchdown. And uh, Judd Cockett likely has his best day as a Sanford Bulldog, hauling in a pair of touchdowns. Uh, Coach Judd is, uh, is a guy I want to talk about, senior transfer from Southern Utah. Um, talk about Judd's impact on the offense this year and also on special teams. Well, he's a, a very heads-up type player. I mean, he, he's kind of a um, utility guy. He can do a little bit of everything. He play inside, he play outside. He's a good return man for us. Great addition to the team, um, not only with the talents that he brings on game day, but um, he's just a super guy. He's fun to be around. The guys like him. And, um, you know, had the big overtime catch against Mercer and played a well of a game on Saturday. So maybe he's starting to hit his peak here in the postseason. Two key plays the game, Fred Flavor's interception at the end of the first half to keep them from scoring. Of course, Braden DeVault-Smith's punching the ball out 
uh, it, out of the quarterback's hand in overtime, which led to the touchback. Talk about Braden Duvall Smith. I mean, this guy, you know, he, he's kind of come on the scene this year. He, he's one of these guys, one of the linebackers that you like to recruit, kind of a ball hawk kind of guy, playmaker, tough guy. Talk about Braden's impact. Well, he's been a, a tremendous addition to our team. You know, we, he's a transfer from Vanderbilt. Um, and he, he's a very athletic player. And, you know, we got some really good linebackers, um, but, but he's made some big plays this season, and none were bigger than the one he knocked out for the touchback to set up the game-winning score um, for the – golly, I think that's the first over – I mean, the first playoff win we've had since 1991 here at Sanford. So it was a great day. Well, with the win, Sanford moves on to the third round of the NCAA championships. The Bulldogs traveled to Fargo, North Dakota to take on perennial FCS power North Dakota State for a nationally televised game Friday night on ESPN2. Uh, Coach, a little birdie told me, and by a little birdie, I mean President Taylor's Twitter account, uh, told me that uh, you've played in the Fargo Dome before, the 1995 uh, Snow Bowl Division II All-Star Game. you have any recollection of that game? Yeah, but I did. I played it. I was fortunate enough to play an All-Star Game up there. And then um, later in that year, I was a student coach at my alma mater, Valdosta State, and we actually played North Dakota State. They were Division II at the time, a national power in Division II. Um, um, they have an awesome venue. Um, they have a great, um, great crowd, especially if you're the home team. Um, and, and they love their North Dakota State football. So um, like each week, it's a, another challenge. Um, you know, we're excited. Um, we're in the, the round of eight. And, um, you know, we were talking the other day in Division I football now, in Division I, FCS, FBS. You know, there's only 12 teams that have a chance to win national championship, and we're one of them. Um, so we're excited. Our guys um, have been preparing well, and um, I expect us to, to play really well Friday night. What's the keys to winning Friday night that you're seeing on film? Same thing they are every week. You got to run the ball when you need to, and you got to better stop the run. And um, we got to do that this week in order to have a chance to be successful. The game will kick off at 6 p.m. in the Fargo Dome. It will be nationally televised again on ESPN2. Uh, Sanford will also, ho also host a watch party at the Pete Hanna Center on Friday night at 6 p.m. So you can join fellow Sanford fans and cheer all the Bulldogs to victory. Coach, good luck in Fargo. Thank you very much. That'll do it for this week's edition of the Coach Chris Hatcher Show, presented by Alabama 811.